All right, I wanted to solve this problem two different ways. We're gonna do one just like we did on the flip chart, but I'm gonna do it live so you can see what I was, I was thinking and I'll talk through it. Uh, and then the other one, we'll, we'll show you an alternative way to solve it that may be easier for you. And both of them are correct, so do the one that works for you. Uh, so we had seven plus nine, which is not an easy problem to solve, but we're gonna make it into a 10 because tens are easy to use and they're easy to solve with. So we're gonna say seven and we said, okay, what makes 10? when I have a seven, seven plus what? And at this point in time, you should be saying seven plus three makes 10. Now, where did that three come from? That three came from the nine. And if we took three from nine, how many would we have left? Now, there's different ways to figure that out, but you can draw circles and take, or draw nine circles and take away three, or you can do it in your head. But nine take away three is gonna give you six. And we're gonna keep our equal sign here. I like to keep my equal signs lined up to keep my problem organized. Uh, but now we're gonna take seven and three here. I'm gonna turn that into, and I, I drew like a number bond here. We're gonna turn that into 10. And the second that you see that you have 10 plus six, those of you who've been doing the say 10 way will actually already know the answer to this problem because what you have is one 10 and six more, which is the same thing as saying 16 and that's where the practice from the say 10 is going to help you and that's it now let's this, this is an, an excellent way of solving the problem and there's nothing wrong with it it will work every time that you do it let's go over here and say hmm maybe when i saw a seven i didn't know how to make 10 but i saw a nine and i knew how to make 10 so this time let's keep our nine and make 10 with our nine so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch these numbers because it just makes it easier for me. And this is called the commutative property of addition. So you can flip these numbers around and it will equal the exact same thing. So now I'm going to keep my 9. It's just one more step of flip-flopping the numbers. And I'm going to say 9 plus what equals 10? Well, I hope everyone knows that 9 plus 1 is going to equal 10. And where did that 1 come from? It came from the 7. And if we took one away from seven, we would have six left. And I'm always gonna write my addition sign here because when you break those numbers apart, it really is one plus six is still seven. Now we can make our 10 because nine and one is 10. No trick there. And what do we have left over? We have the six left over. And look, we have the same problem here and here, we did it two different ways. It is the exact same answer. 110 and six more is gonna equal 16. So two different ways to do it. Do the one that works for you. When you see a number that you recognize and make 10, use that number. Remember, you can always flip-flop an addition problem to do this, to make it easier to work with. Okay, here's our second example. This was 14 plus five, and we, we solved this a different way because this was a number that already had a 10 inside of it. And when we see that, we wanna take that number that has a 10 and some more units and break it down so we can see it as just a 10. So we're gonna decompose this one, and 14 is the same thing as saying 110 and four more. And you can be writing that with me as I go. Now we're gonna to continue to keep our plus five here because we didn't do anything to our plus five. We can't take 10 out of five, so it's gonna be there. And now what we do is we look for numbers that we can add easy. Now remember, the commutative property of addition allows us to flip-flop these numbers any way I'd like. So we wanna solve for a number that we recognize. Uh, but it's easy at this point to solve just for the ones. So I'm gonna keep my 10 as is because I love my 10 being alone. And what I have left is a four and a five. Well, in my head, I know five plus five would be 10. So four plus five must give me nine. So I'm still using my knowledge of making 10 even when I'm solving problems like this. 4 and 5 is 9. It was so close to being 5 and 5, which was 10. So, once I'm here, no problem with this. This is 110 and 9 more, which is the same thing as saying 19. Because there's a 1 
in the tens place and there's a nine in the ones place or the units place depending on what you call it. This problem is correct. Now let's look at a problem that's going to give us a little more difficulty and you'll see why in a moment. We see 15 here which is the same thing as saying 110 and 5 more so we're going to take the same approach. Let's take the 10 out. It's a nice round number, it's easy to work with, that's why we take it out. So 10 and 5 which is 110 and 5 more is the same thing as 15. Now. I see 5 and 8, hmm, I immediately know that 5 and 8 are going to be more than 10. I know that because 5 plus 5 is going to give me 10, and I know that 8 plus 2 would give me 10, so 5 plus 8 is going to give me more than 10. So what I'd like to do here is make 10. Uh, now 5 is a pretty easy number to work with, so I'm going to keep my 10 and I'm gonna use my five, keep it right here, and I'm gonna make 10 by, again, by adding. So what do you have to add to a five to make 10? Five plus what, five plus what equals 10? And it's gonna be another five. Well, where did that five come from? Remember, it came from the eight. And if you took five away from eight, you would have how many left? You would have three left. All right. Now, if you need to draw eight marks to know this, it's perfectly fine. There's eight marks. If I took five, that's four, and five. If I took five away, how many are left? I have these three left. That's all we're doing there. If you need to visually represent that, perfectly fine. It's quick. You don't have to draw nice circles. Just draw little dots, just make sure you draw the right number of them. So now what we have is, we have a 10. And since we did five and five, we have another 10 and a three. So how many tens do we have? We have two tens. So our two tens, what is two tens? Two tens is 10, 20. Two tens is equal to 20 plus 3 more is the same thing as saying 2 tens and 3 more. 2 tens and 3 more is 23. Now that problem is a little difficult. It may take some practice. Watch it a couple times, try a couple on your own, and you're always just on a quest to make 10 uh, with addition problems. And this is going to help us when we start getting into subtraction. So let's take a look at our subtraction problem now. These numbers are very similar to the numbers that we were using in the addition problems that we had done. And a lot of the steps are the same. Uh, we're going to look at 19 and we're going to decompose 19. Because 19, at this point, you should be saying, hey, 19 is the same thing as saying 110 and 9 more. So we're going to take our 10 out. We're going to decompose the number 19. And when we decompose, when we create that number bond, it becomes 10 and 9 more, which is exactly what we just said. And we're going to keep our, our subtraction sign here, minus 4. All right? So we just represented this expression, which is 19 minus 4. We represented it differently, but it's the same value. 19 is the same thing as saying 110 and 9 more. So it's okay that we did that. Because now we're going to work with just the ones to solve. We're going to keep our 10 as is. That's why we made 10. And we're going to ask ourselves now, I'm going to keep my plus sign here because no matter what I get over here, I'm going to have to add it back to the 10. We have 9 minus 4. Well, in my head, I know 10 minus 4 is 6. So if I did 1 less, then 9 minus 4 must be 5. Uh, that's going to take some, some mental practice to do problems like that in your head. But that's not a problem because what did we talk about earlier? If we're not sure, we can always just visually represent it. So if I wanted to do 9 minus 4, I'd just do 9 dots. That's 3, that's 4, that's 5, that's 6, that's 7, that's 8, that's 9. And I had 9 dots and I'm taking away 4. No problem. I'm just going to grab my eraser right here and I'm going to take away 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Gone. What do I have left? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we were right. It's a good way to check your mental math. There's nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't take a long time. Just quick representations. And it's a great way to show your work. 
So now we're left with 110 and 5 more, which is the same thing as saying 10 plus 5, and that's going to give us 110 and 5 more, because the 1 is in the tens place, and the 5 is in the ones place, or the units place. And that is correct. That is all there is to it. Alright, so bear with me on this problem because this is the problem that's going to give a lot of kids difficulty, a lot of students, second grade students, third grade students, who truly just don't understand uh, regrouping. Um, and so just show them this problem and let's spend some time talking about it. This problem, the numbers all look very similar to the ones we've been using, but this problem has something different. It says 14 minus 6 or 110 and 4 minus 6. So I wrote it vertically here, up and down, to show you where the difficulty comes from. 4 is in the ones place, in the number 14. So our first operation we're going to be doing is 4 minus 6. Well, that should, sh should throw up a red flag to you, because if I have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, the most I can take away from 4 is 4. I can't take away 6. So what's going to have to happen is, I'm going to end up having to borrow from this 10. I'm going to take this 10 and turn that 10 into 10 ones. So I can take as many ones from it as I need, so I can solve this problem. So let's see what that looks like. Let's, let's take our time here, and don't be afraid to feel a little frustrated here. This one takes a while to understand. So we have our number 14. And like we said, we can say 110 and 4 more. So let's let's decompose this number just like we did before. And I'm going to show you a really good trick on how to solve this problem. What happened there? All right. So there's 10 and 4 more minus 6. No problem. All right, so we run immediately into our difficulty. We say, hey, we have 10, but now we're doing four minus six. Well, I can't do four minus six, but there is a great property called the commutative property of addition. When I see this problem here, I can actually turn that problem, 10 plus four, I can turn it into four plus 10. It's okay to do that when you have an addition problem. You can flip-flop the numbers of an addition problem. That's a rule, it's a property, it will always work. Now, I'm gonna keep my minus six here. Now, what do you see? Now you see that, hey, I can solve this subtraction problem pretty well. And I know a lot about the number 10 and how to make 10. So when I see 10 minus six, hmm, I know when I have a six that I would need how many more to make 10. I see that there's a, an association between these numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my four down because I'm not working with my four right now. It's just off to the side. I'm gonna add whatever I get in this subtraction problem back to the four. So this is 10 minus six. Well, if we need to draw it out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I wanna take my time and take away my six, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, how many do I have left? I got four left. It didn't take a long time to show that work. So I know that 10 minus six is gonna give me four. Well, that's not too hard of a problem to solve now. So all I have left is four plus four, and I'm gonna get eight. Now, I'm gonna show you this problem again in a more visual representational way, if that's even good grammar that I just used. So let's just erase this, uh, and you can pause this and do it as many times as you'd like, but I'm going to erase this so I can show it a different way. So let's rewrite our problem. All right, we have 14 minus 6 equals unknown. We don't know what it equals. So that's a question mark. All right, same thing. I'm going to break this down. Take 14, I'm going to break it down into 10 plus four. And notice that's the one thing that doesn't change. When I have a number that I can take 10 out of, I'm gonna keep taking 10 out of it. That's gonna make the problem easier. It looks like there's more numbers, but these numbers are easier to work with, and that's why we do it. So this time, instead of flip-flopping the numbers, let's, let's just talk about it. 
I have a 10 and I have a 4, all right? 4 minus 6, we've discussed. If I have 4, I can't take away 6. I would at least need this number to be 6 to take away 6, all right? Well, let's look at these numbers. Let's, let's visually represent them. I'm going to make 10 right here. So that's 6, that's 8, that's 10. So I have 10 plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as you can see, I have 4 and I can't take away 6, I only have 4. So what can I do here? I'm going to actually borrow some of these 1s. Remember, a 10 is just 10 1s, that's what it means. It's a group of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group of 2 right here and I'm going to bring it over. To this. Now while I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you that we're not changing the number. Here, watch. This is 10, right? Plus 4 would give me 10, and then 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, if I move these two over to here, which is still in my addition problem, let's see if we still get 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's the same problem. But look what just happened. Now the problem says, 8 plus 6 minus 6. See, I gave it 2 so I could make it 6 because I know 6 minus 6 is going to equal nothing. It's going to be 0. If I have 6 and I take away 6, I'll have nothing left. So if that's true, these are gone and all I have left over is my 8 which is the same answer that we got doing it the other way. Visual representation is an excellent way of solving problems. Making 10 in conjunction with doing these visual models is going to help you. Watch the videos, figure out the way, the best way that you can figure out doing it. In the end, we want you to get the right answer. We want you to understand why you're getting the right answer. And that's, that's why it's gonna take a little bit of perseverance from you as the student, but with a lot of hard work and practice, it's going to become a little more simple for you.